Well, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great honor to be with you. And we had some really incredible things happen today. Uh, the uh, polls are coming out. Uh, we're leading in so many polls, I can't tell you. I don't know where to begin. But that's a good feeling. And uh, we are, uh, I guess CNN just came out. We're leading nationwide with CNN. Uh, we're leading in uh, Ohio. And we're leading just, uh, I think it just came out, we're leading in, um, we're leading in North Carolina, Florida. We're leading and we're having a lot of fun. We're having a lot of fun on the campaign and on the trail. I just wanted to say that, and it's always a lot of fun when you come up and the people don't have the teleprompter working, but that's okay. <laughs> Lucky I brought some notes. But today I do want to outline a plan for American economic revival. And it's a bold and ambitious and forward-looking plan to massively increase jobs, wages, income, and opportunities for the people of our country, great people of our country, I will tell you. My plan will embrace the truth that people flourish under a minimum government burden and will tap into the incredible unrealized potential of our workers and their dreams. Right now, 92 million Americans are on the sideline outside of the workforce, and they're not a part of our economy. It's a silent nation of jobless Americans. And look no further, and I mean no further. All you have to do is look at Flint, where I spent a lot of time, the city of Flint, and what a disaster has taken place. The jobs have been stripped from the community and its infrastructure has totally collapsed. In 1970, there were more than 80,000 people in Flint working for General Motors. Today, it's less than $8,000. We have 8,000 people and that's going down and they're making very, very little. And people are trying to go down to that $8,000 mark. What we're doing is Ford. Ford has announced just yesterday that they're moving their small car production facilities to Mexico. And I've been talking about this a long while, and I think that's maybe one of the reasons that we're doing so well in Ohio and Michigan and lots of other places where cars and parts are involved. But to think that Ford is moving its small car division is a disgrace. It's disgraceful. It's disgraceful that our politicians allow them to get away with it. it. Really is. It used to be cars were made in Flint and you couldn't drink the water in Mexico. Now cars are made in Mexico and you can't drink the water in Flint. But we're going to turn this around. My economic plan rejects the cynicism that says our labor force will keep declining, that our jobs will keep leaving, and that our economy can never grow as it did once before. And boy, oh boy, did it used to grow. We reject the pessimism that says our standard of living can no longer rise, and that's all there is really left to divide, because frankly, we're looking at an economy now of no growth and redistribution of wealth. And that's not going to work. Everything that is broken today can be fixed, and every failure can be turned into a truly great success. Just look at the way I just melded into the teleprompter that just went on. <laughs> Who else could have pulled that off, okay? Who else? Jobs can stop leaving our country 
and they will just absolutely start pouring in. It can happen. Failing schools can become flourishing schools. Crumbling roads and bridges can become gleaming new infrastructure. Inner cities can experience a flood of new jobs and investment. And rising crime can give way to safe and prosperous communities. All of these things and so much more are possible. But to accomplish them, we must replace the present policy of globalism, which have it just taken so many jobs out of our communities and so much wealth out of our country, and replace it with a new policy of Americanism. America first. Remember that. <laughs> Under this American system, every policy decision we make must pass a simple test. Does it create more jobs and better wages for Americans? It's a test. If we lower our taxes, remove destructive regulations, and we have to do that, unleash the vast treasure of American energy, and negotiate trade deals that put America first, then there is no limit to the number of jobs we can create and the amount of prosperity we can unleash. America will truly be the greatest place in the world to invest, hire, grow, and to create new jobs, new technologies, and entire new industries. Instead, thank you. Instead of driving jobs and wealth away, America will become the world's great magnet for innovation and job creation. My opponent's plan rejects this optimism. She offers only more taxing, and her tax increases are unbelievable. More regulating, more spending, and more wealth redistribution. A future of slow growth, declining incomes, and dwindling prosperity. The only people who get rich under Hillary Clinton are the donors and the special interests, but bad for our country. In Hillary Clinton's America, we have surrendered our status as the world's great economy, and we have surrendered our middle class to the whims of foreign countries. We take care of them better than we take care of ourselves. Not one single idea she's got will create one net American job or create one new dollar of American wealth for our workers. The only thing she can offer is a welfare check. That's about it. Our plan will produce paychecks and they're going to be great paychecks for millions of people now unemployed or underemployed. In the course of this campaign, I've traveled all across the country, and I've met the most amazing people. Every day, I've seen the goodness and character of our country and brave citizens proudly fighting through hard times and difficult circumstances. I have been all over this country, folks, and we have unbelievable people, but they need leadership. The country needs leadership. In many parts of our country, the hard times never seem to end. I visited cities and towns in upstate New York where half of the jobs have left and moved to Mexico and other countries. The businesses are gone. They've been taken away like taking candy from a baby. Politicians have abandoned these places all over the country, and the people who live there are just there. No hope. Worse still, politicians have heaped scorn and disdain on these wonderful Americans. My opponent described tens of millions of American citizens as deplorable and irredeemable just last week. So how can Hillary Clinton seek to lead this country when she considers its citizens, tremendous, tremendous numbers of them, beyond redemption? The hardworking people she calls deplorable 
are the most admirable people I know. They're cops. They're cops and soldiers, teachers and firefighters, young and old, moms and dads, blacks and whites, Latinos, above all, everything else. They're Americans. Some are rich Americans. Some are poor Americans. They're Americans. They love their families. They love their country. And they want a better future. These are the forgotten men and women of our country. And they have been forgotten. People who work hard but don't have a voice. I'm running to be their voice. and to fight and bring prosperity to every part of this country. Too many of our leaders have forgotten that it's their duty to protect the jobs, wages, and well-being of American workers before any consideration, before anything. We have to do that. I'm not running to be the president of the world. I'm running to be the president of the United States of America. And as your president, I will fight for every last American job and every American company, which really a lot of companies in this room, I can tell you. We're going to be fighting for you because you're bringing the jobs. We're a nation that tamed the West, dug out the Panama Canal, and won two world wars and put a man on the moon. It's time to start thinking big once again. That's why I believe it's time to establish a national goal of reaching 4% economic growth. And my great economists don't want me to say this, but I think we can do better than that. Now they're upset. They'll be very upset. But I think we can do and maybe substantially better than that. In working with my economic team, we put together a plan that puts us on track to achieve that goal. Over the next 10 years, our economic team estimates that under our plan, the economy will average 3.5% growth and create a total of 25 million new jobs. You can visit our website. Just look at the math. It works. This growth means that our jobs and plans, including our child care reforms that Ivanka Trump, my daughter, is so involved in, will be completely, I like her too, I agree, <laughs> will be completely paid for in combination with proposed budget savings. It will be deficit neutral. If we reach 4% growth, it will reduce the deficit. It will be accomplished through a complete overhaul of our tax, regulatory, energy, and trade policies. Right now, under the Obama-Clinton policies, the economy grew only 1.1% last quarter, a number that was shocking to people that do this professionally and for life. It translates into millions of lost jobs, and certainly millions of lost good jobs, because we don't have good jobs anymore. Those jobs are gone and going. This is the weakest so-called recovery since the Great Depression. Over the last seven years, the economy grew only 2.1 percent, the slowest period in 70, 70, 70 years. Had the economy grown under Obama at the same rate as Reagan, it would have meant 10 million more jobs. Perhaps most shockingly, one in six men aged 18 to 34 are either in jail or out of work. Meanwhile, another 2 million Hispanic Americans have been added to the ranks of those in poverty. On top of it all, the Obama-Clinton policies have doubled 
the national debt. It took more than 230 years for the United States to accumulate its first $10 trillion in debt. It took President Obama less than eight years to add another $10 trillion. Now, it would be one thing if that money had been used to completely rebuild our nation, our military, our infrastructure, but that didn't happen. Instead, the opposite happened. We doubled our debt, and in return, we have dilapidated infrastructure, failing schools, a badly depleted military, greatest people on earth, and they have a badly depleted military, its equipment, old and tired. And another 14 million people who have left the workforce. Never has so much money been spent so poorly and so unwisely. But we're going to turn that all around, and here's how. It begins with bold new tax reform. Don't worry, they're going down, not up. They're going down. I think you were concerned they're going up. As outlined in Detroit, our tax plan will greatly simplify the code and reduce the number of brackets from seven to three. The new brackets will be 12, 25, and 33 percent. But low-income Americans will pay no income tax at all. In fact, our plan will remove millions and millions of workers from the income tax roll entirely, so that all of that work that we do in Washington can be discontinued. They'll pay tax. They'll pay tax, but they'll pay tax when they start making a certain amount of income. By lowering rates, streamlining deductions, and simplifying the process, we will add millions and millions of new jobs. In addition, because we have strongly capped deductions, for the wealthy and close special interest loopholes, the tax relief will be concentrated on the working and middle class taxpayer. They will receive the biggest benefit and it won't even be close. They have been forgotten. We are not going to forget them. They have built our country. We will not forget. This is a working, thank you. This is a working and middle class tax relief proposal. The tax relief for these workers will be expanded by my child care proposals that I have worked on with my daughter Ivanka. These proposals are central and a very, very powerful central element of our comprehensive tax reform and economic growth plan. Families will be able to fully deduct the average cost of childcare from their taxes, including stay-at-home parents. Because this deduction is capped, it will be disproportionately and it will benefit working and middle-class families. We've got to take care of our middle-class families. The less you make, the larger a share of your income you can exclude from taxation. Parents will also be able to enroll a tax-free dependent care savings account for their children or elderly relatives. Low-income households will benefit from both an expanded earned income tax credit in the form of child care rebates and a matching $500 contribution for their savings account. A married couple earning $50,000 per year with two children and 8,000 in childcare expenses will save 35% from their current tax bill. That's a tremendous saving. And they'll have a better life. A married couple earning $75,000 per year with two children and 10,000 in childcare expenses will receive a 30% reduction in their tax bill from what they're paying right now. By contrast, someone earning $5 million, like the people in this room, <laughs> will receive virtually no change in their tax bill at all. One of our greatest job creation measures is going to be 
our 15 percent business tax rate down from the current 35 percent rate, a reduction of more than 40 percent. I know that's what you people have been waiting for. <laughs> An explosion of new businesses and new jobs will be created. It will be amazing to watch. You watch, and it'll happen. We will also allow United States-based manufacturers to fully expense the cost of new plants and equipment. Big, big deal. <laughs> On top of that, we will bring back trillions in business wealth, and this is wealth that's parked overseas. Nobody knows how much it is. They say it's two and a half trillion. I have people that think it's five trillion dollars. We'll bring them back, and it'll be taxed only at the rate of 10 percent instead of 35 percent. And who would bring it back at 35 percent? Obviously nobody, because nobody's doing that. I think it's going to be something that will be so phenomenal, far beyond what people even think. By taxing it at 10% instead of 35%, all of this money will come roaring back into our country and lots of good things will start to happen. We will turn America into a new magnet for new jobs, and that means jobs in our poorest communities. So important. And right now, we have companies leaving the country because taxes are too high, but we actually have companies leaving the country to get their money. And that's a first. Nobody's ever heard of that one before, but believe me, that's happening. Next comes regulations. One of the keys to unlocking growth is scaling back years of disastrous regulations, unilaterally imposed by out-of-control bureaucrats. Regulations have grown into a massive job-killing industry. And the regulation industry is one business I will absolutely put to an end day one. In 2015 alone, federal agencies issued over 3,300 final rules and regulations up from 2,400 the prior year. Every year, over-regulation costs our economy $2 trillion a year and reduces household wealth by almost $15,000. I proposed a moratorium on new federal regulations that are not compelled by Congress or public safety, and I will eliminate all needless and job-killing regulations now on the books, and there are plenty of them. This includes eliminating some of our most intrusive regulations, like the waters of the U.S. rule. It also means scrapping the EPA's so-called Clean Power Plan, which the government itself estimates will cost $7.2 billion a year. This Obama-Clinton directive will shut down most, if not all, coal-powered electricity plants. I mean, all over the country, they're shutting down. Remember what Hillary Clinton said. She wants to shut down the miners just like she wants to shut down the steel mills and shut down the steel workers, and we're not going to let it happen. We're going to put our great miners and our steel workers back to work. Energy reform is central to our plan as well. According to Heritage Foundation, by 2030, President Obama's energy restrictions will eliminate another half a million manufacturing jobs, reduce economic output by $2.5 trillion, and reduce incomes by $7,000 per person. And today, you have workers, and I see them all the time, and I meet them all the time, and they're part of this massive group of people that have just come on to this movement. But you have workers making less money today than they made 18 years ago in real wages. They're working much harder, oftentimes because of the disastrous Obamacare that we're going to repeal and replace. Oftentimes, they're working two jobs. So they're working harder, they're older, and they're making less. 
It's like me. I'm working harder than I've ever worked also. <laughs> but these are minor. Nobody cares about that. That's not. Who cares about that? Hillary Clinton wants to go even further. And her plan could cost the economy $5 trillion. A Trump administration will lift restrictions on all sources of American energy production. According to the Institute for American Energy Resources, this will increase the GDP by more than $100 billion annually. Add over 500,000 new jobs annually. Increase annual wages by more than $30 billion over the next seven years. Increase federal, state, local tax revenues by almost $6 trillion over four decades. Increase total economic activity by more than $20 trillion over a 40-year period. In addition, we will streamline the permitting process for all energy infrastructure projects which are desperately needed, including the billions of dollars in projects held up by President Obama currently being held up. They just won't approve anything, creating countless more jobs in the process. Finally comes trade, the foundation for everything. America's annual trade deficit with the world is now almost $800 billion a year. Who are negotiating these deals? Anybody in this room negotiating these wonderful deals? Think of it. We have a trade deficit of almost $800 billion a year. That's going to change so fast. Between World War I and the year 2000, the United States averaged a 3.5 percent growth rate. But after China joined the World Trade Organization, our average growth rate has been reduced to only 2 percent. Predatory trade practices, product dumping, currency manipulation, which is a big one, and intellectual property theft have taken millions of jobs and trillions of dollars in wealth right out of our country, right out of our country. So sad that we allowed this to happen. Our incompetent politicians were not watching, and the ones that were watching were taken care of in some form, because this should have never allowed, been allowed to have happened. It is no great secret that many of the special interests funding my opponent's campaign are the same people profiting from these terrible trade deals. They are terrible. They're terrible for everybody. The same so-called experts advising Hillary Clinton are the same people who gave us NAFTA, China's entry into the World Trade Organization, the job-killing trade deal with South Korea, another disaster, and now the Trans-Pacific Partnership that they're pushing so strongly. The verdict is in all of the special interests that the media race, and they just race to comment and race to get comment from, have been proven wrong over such a long period of time. Every single deal they've promoted, every lie, and every prediction has crashed. It's just crashed. They've been so absolutely wrong, and they've been so bad for our country. Our manufacturing base has crumbled. Communities have been hollowed out. Wages have declined. And households are making less today than they were in the year 2000. I proposed a detailed plan to reform our trade policies and bring vast new jobs and wealth to America. We need our wealth back. We don't have wealth. We are a debtor nation. This includes the following steps. I'm going to direct the Secretary of Commerce to identify every violation of trade agreement that a foreign country is using to harm our country and our workers. And that's what's happening. They're being harmed, and our country is being harmed. I will use every tool under American and international law to end these abuses, and I will use our greatest business leaders and finest negotiators, and I will tell you some of them are in this room right now. Not all of them, but some of them. And I know who you are, and 
honestly, we're going to be calling on you because we have people negotiating the biggest deals in the world, far bigger than your company deals. Your company deals are like little deals by comparison. We have, it's true, you take some of these big companies and you look at some of these trade deals, hate to say it, but your companies are peanuts. <laughs> but we're going to use our best. Right now we have political hacks negotiating the biggest, most important deals in the world. We're going to start with NAFTA, which is causing so much damage to our country. We will entirely renegotiate NAFTA into a deal that will either be a good one for us as a country and for our worker, or we will terminate it until a brand new and productive deal can be signed. We'll also, and we have to, we're going to keep America out of Trans-Pacific Partnership unless we can do something that's phenomenal, and I'm not seeing it right now. I can tell you that. I'm not seeing it. Next, I'm going to instruct my Treasury Secretary to label China, and I like China, they're my tenant, they buy condos all the time, they're just fine. But you know what? They are a currency manipulator, and we're going to apply tariffs to any country that devalues its currency to gain an unfair advantage over the United States. They are a manipulator, grandmaster level. We can't allow it to happen. And our people and our representatives and our politicians don't have even a little clue as to how to play the game. We have a trade deficit this year with China of approximately $500 billion. What kind of a deal is that? And this has been going on for years, $200 billion, $300 billion, $400 billion for years. I'm going to instruct the United States Trade Representative to bring trade cases against China. China's unfair subsidy behavior is prohibited by the terms of its entrance into the WTO, and I intend to enforce the rules. And I'm sure we'll make a deal somewhere along the way. But they're not playing fairly, and our politicians don't understand how to play the game. If China does not stop its illegal activities, including its theft of American trade secrets and intellectual properties, I will apply countervailing duties until China ceases and desists. You know what that means. Just a single action of enforcing intellectual property rules alone, just alone, would add millions of new American jobs. According to the United States International Trade Commission, improve protection of America's internet. Uh, just think of this. Improve protection of America's intellectual property in China would add two million jobs a year within the United States every single year. And we do nothing. We allow them to get away with it. Who can blame them? And I don't blame them at all. If you can get away with it, they're going to get away with it. We're going to stop the outflow of jobs from our country and open a new highway of jobs back into our country. Here's how the plan adds up. We're proposing a $4.4 trillion tax cut that will score as a $2.6 trillion under dynamic growth models, which is how taxes should be scored. This includes the child care plan that we announced the other day. Our economic team has further modeled that the growth induced savings from trade, energy, and regulation reform will shave at least another $1.8 trillion off of the remaining debt. That leaves around $800 billion. This money can all be saved through simple, common sense reforms. If we just save one penny of each federal dollar spent on non-defense and non-entitlement programs, we can save almost $1 trillion 
over the next decade. One penny. We can all do that. <laughs> Save over a trillion. Again, this is spending that does not touch defense because we have to build up our military, which is so terribly depleted. And that does not touch entitlements. If our plan exceeds the 3.5 percent 10-year growth average, then our jobs proposed will actually reduce and start really strongly reducing the deficit. Savings will be compounded by the fact that people who are currently receiving unemployment or welfare will finally be able to find jobs. This is the most pro-growth, pro-jobs, pro-family plan put forth, perhaps, in the history of our country. This is what our new future will look like. I'm going to lower your taxes very, very substantially. I'm going to get rid of massive amounts of unnecessary regulation. All of these regulations on your business and in your life I'm going to unleash American energy. I'm going to repeal and replace Obamacare. I'm going to appoint justices of the Supreme Court who will follow the Constitution. I'm going to rebuild our depleted military and take care of our vets who are treated so badly. In many cases, our vets are treated not nearly as well as people who come into our country illegally. We can't have that. I'm going to save your Second Amendment, which is under siege. I'm going to stop illegal immigration and drugs from pouring into our country and totally poisoning our youth and others. It's a tremendous problem. And yes, we will build the wall. The wall will be built. And just in case you're worried about who's going to pay for it, Mexico will pay for it. Being totally serious about that. Mexico will pay for it. And you understand, Mexico, by the way, we look at the trade deficit we have with Mexico. It's massive. The wall is peanuts compared to what we're talking about. Mexico will pay for the wall. And I'm going to renegotiate our disastrous trade deals, especially NAFTA. And we will only make great trade deals that put the American worker first and put the American worker back to work. That includes our miners and our steel workers. They're going back to work. We will rebuild our roads, our bridges, our tunnels, our highways, our airports, schools, hospitals. We'll rebuild everything. American cars will travel the roads. American planes will soar the skies. And American ships will patrol the seas. American steel will send new skyscrapers into the clouds. American hands will rebuild this nation. And American energy harvested from American sources will power this nation. American workers will be hired to do the job. We will put new American metal and new American steel into the spine of this country. Jobs will return, incomes will rise, new factories will come rushing back to our shores. We will make America wealthy again. We will make America strong again. And we will make America great again. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much.